computer. Got it. All right, Holly, go ahead. Ready to go? We're ready. Hi, I'm Holly. <laughs> Hi, I'm Holly from Charlotte, North Carolina. We are excited to be on today to discuss the mentorship and the training that EXP offers. And we are going to jump right in with Jennifer and Eric asking questions about teams versus no teams, full caps versus half caps. And um, excited to have you all on today. Thank you. Thank you. So Eric, um, why don't you go ahead and start? You, um, you're, you were new to real estate, you're not anymore, but how did it all start with you? <clears throat> well, um, I had wanted to do real estate for a long time. I always thought that it was something I'd be good at, that something that I could do as a career full time. Um, it just so happened that when COVID hit, it was the perfect timing for me to start studying and educating myself on it. Um, so I took that time to do that. And once I passed, well, actually, while I was taking the course, um, I was interviewing brokers from other, from all over Monmouth County. So I was talking to people from the big box real estate brokerages. And then um, a chiropractor that I know recommended John to me. So I set up an appointment to go talk to John. I'd never heard of EXP before. Um, I met with John. And after about 30 minutes, I knew that that was the right choice for me. Um, not only was the conversation comfortable and relaxing and informative, I felt such a good energy from John where I felt like with the other brokers, um, I, I didn't think that they could offer the same type of compensation and the same type of um, tools that were necessary. John kind of laid it out perfectly for me and everything just made sense. Um, so. I feel like I made the right decision, of course. Um, I, ever since I started with EXP, um, John's really held my hand. Like, I mean, I asked every question there could possibly be. Um, and I worked really hard too. I was working, you know, seven days a week. If there's a lead that came in at 12 o'clock at night, I would follow up with the lead. Um, John was always there to help me. We will, you know, he took me on a lot of appointments himself too. And after my first calendar year was over, we decided that I would go off the team and kind of go on my own, but he was still going to be my mentor and he still gives me referrals. And um, yeah, I'm just really happy my first year. I, I can't even believe I did 16 transactions in 12 months. And I think that that was, that was just even surprising to me a little bit. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with everything. And as a matter of fact, today I'm hearing back from, we put a very strong offer in yesterday for another KV core lead. So I've had, I don't even know, maybe five or seven KV core leads that have panned out. Um, they're all buyer leads, but today I, I find out for if, if we have another one accepted. So fingers crossed. It's That's awesome. What, what area do you service, Eric? So I, I live in Asbury Park, but I, I like to focus on Monmouth and Ocean County, but I'm the type of guy that will go anywhere. So I actually, I got the Hudson MLS. I sold a multifamily in Jersey City. And I have, uh, through a referral from my real estate attorney, I have an investor that works an hour and 45 minutes south of where I live in South Jersey. And we're doing six to 10 properties in a two-year span, and we're leasing them as well. So that's a huge, huge win for me. That's huge. Where is that? It's down in Pine Hill, Clementon, Laurel Springs. Okay. So it's uh, like not too far outside of Philadelphia. Um, <laughs> But I drive down there once a week and I don't mind the drive at all. Like I said, I, I'll, I'll go, you know, north to south the entire length of the state. I prefer to stay in Monmouth and Ocean County. And then as I keep building my business up and keep learning and growing, I really, really want to. I was, I was born and raised in, in Seagirt. It's a small little beach town and it's like multi-million dollar homes. Yeah. And I really want to get into that luxury presence here on the coast. Very nice. Um, do you remember when you were doing your interviews with the other firms and then also with John, do you remember some of the questions you were asking and what you feel like now at EXP would be important questions for, 
for new agents to be asking? Okay. Um, what I can remember is because I didn't know anything about real estate. I, I wasn't in, I think EXP is kind of set up, I think more for someone that already has been an agent. Um, at least that's what I felt. Um, John is an amazing mentor, but I had questions that someone completely new would ask, like, what's the commission split? You know, um, what are all the fees per month that I have to pay versus EXP's fees or what fees are mm -hmm. or are not there? Um, you know, is there a health insurance options? Um, you know, are you the, the, the most important thing I was asking basically was, you know, I have a, I have a big sphere of influence, but are you going to give me leads? Um, and if you do give me leads, what is that referral fee going to be? What's the commission split? You know, what's the E&O mm -hmm. insurance? What's the transaction fees? Are there desk fees? Basically, I wanted to get all the numbers down and then compare them across the board. But also, when I spoke with Sotheby's or I spoke with the Berkshire Hathaway guy or I spoke with Diane Turton, um, Weikert, I, 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 they kind of made me feel like it, they were... They almost made it feel like I was like, I would have been lucky to be with them. Um, when I spoke with John XP, it kind of seemed like it was more of like, uh, it, just the growing aspect of EXP, I felt like um, I'm, I've never been the type of person to want to go sit in an office all buttoned up and kind of fall into line, so to speak. I, I'm not really much of like, I, I worked in Manhattan after college for a little while and it was not for me. I'm not an office guy. So EXP knowing that I could kind of be independent and have a home office and pretty much work on my time, you know, where and when I want to, I, I really liked that a lot. The big box brokers, I felt like were kind of just afraid that they were losing so many agents, maybe to this new model, or they kind of were just yeah. kind of, it seemed like they're like a little full of themselves a little bit where I, you know, I, I'm 40 years old. I didn't really want to kind of go be talked down to or made to feel like I'm lucky to be somewhere. I just kind of wanted to go, be myself. And I think EXP allows me to kind of brand myself and be myself as long as I follow compliance. Um, I can pretty much do what I want. And I really love that a lot. It's like I make all my own marketing pictures and Instagram posts and stuff. And um, it, it, just the independence is what really what I gravitated towards because I'm, I'm a pretty independent person. So having John and having that team aspect was awesome, but also being able to just work from my own home office every day and um yeah that's pretty that's pretty much the main reasons it's the financials and it's the freedom and the independence very cool oh, that's awesome. what are your 2022 goals you said you closed out six first year which is awesome really incredible have you identified what you want to do this year yeah, so I want to do, uh, I had a 22 in my mind, but I also have 40 in my mind, so I don't really know. I, I want to get to 40 in a, within a couple of years, but I think a 22 would be great this year. I, what I really want to do, though, is I really want to put more effort into my marketing um, campaigns, um, creating marketing materials, farming areas like John's been doing for 20 years. I want to start farming the areas that people know me. Um, Monmouth County, you know, um, there's a lot of towns around here. I've, I've been, I like to say, I've been leaving footprints in Monmouth County for 35 years. So I want to farm the area that I know best and get my face out there a lot. And um, I really want to, I re my goal, my main goal is to have a listing in the town I grew up in. I want to have a listing in Seagirt. It's a really tough market to get into. It's a small town, but, you know, one of those listings can kind of change your life, you know. Um, Another goal I have is I want to have more of a online presence with um, videos and I just recently upgraded my technology. So I have like a MacBook now and everything, and I'm trying to learn how to create videos, maybe even start like a YouTube channel or something. Um, but as far as goals for, for work, I, I just want to double my production basically. I'm not like trying to say that I'm going to get a hundred transactions closed. I don't even think I want to do a hundred. I don't see, I don't, I, I, that seems like more of, I, when I was speaking to other brokers, there's agents there that were bragging to me about hitting 10 million or hitting this or hitting that. And 
I'm all about making income, making money, but I really, really am a people person. I just, I, I, I'm more concerned with the relationships. So if I were to do 40 and that might, for me, that's like, that's like doing a hundred. I mean, I, I, I just want to have, I want to have a successful life, but I don't want to be in it just for the numbers and like get someone to, you know, to write a contract, push it to a transaction coordinator, push that work off to someone else move on to the next sale, the next number. That's not, that's not me. I want to, I want to kind of hold the client's hand through the process. I love that. I started with EXP working with John because I had to learn how to do everything. I had to do all the paperwork, all the contractual stuff, you know, every single aspect of the deal from when you first meet that lead to closing day, every single aspect I do myself. And with other companies, I feel like the agents are so consumed with the numbers that they have these people in the office that they push the work off to they move on to the next number um so i want to be busy enough where i might need a little bit of help like an assistant or something where i can have some help with the contractual part because if it takes me an hour to populate 10 documents and send that document via, via digisign to a client yeah in that hour i could also be prospecting or doing something else right I'm really happy that I had to do that. So I learned how to do it all from step one. But um, I, I think I think being able to balance keeping the, my business going the same way it is, where like my relationship and my people skills, I want to keep that intact and not kind of fall victim to like the whole the whole numbers game, I guess. And I also want to be doing business with higher price points. So hitting my cap would probably be if I was selling, you know, 10 homes in the $150,000 range versus selling one home for a million dollars, you know, I kind of want to yeah. work smarter, not harder. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Every, as you were speaking, I was just thinking just having that work-life balance and then also being able to service your clients at a really high level versus having volume of clients where maybe you're not serving them at the highest level. That's awesome. All right, Miss Jennifer. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you here. Yeah. Um, we met in Las Vegas and you joined EXP shortly after that trip and you have not been on a team. Is that right? Right. Well, you came in. So, well, initially when I came in, <clears throat> excuse me, and kind of purpose to piggyback what Eric was saying that yes, coming into EXP initially. It was, I felt geared more towards people who had either been on a team or had the experience and I didn't have any experience whatsoever as a realtor. And I've been in the industry for like, like two and a half years now. And um, immediately I started going to Plainfield and meeting with John and that was wonderful, but it's like a half an hour drive every time. And so it was just kind of a pain in the butt. And um so locally, I found a team right here in my town. And uh, so I ended up joining them and they were a very big, initially Bergen County. I'm in Mars County, but I work, you know, I'll work Essex, Sussex, Mars, especially, but I'll travel. There's no reason why not. Um, but I ended up joining that team. And this was, I guess, right in the beginning of COVID when I joined them, it was a few months right before. And um it was great. I loved the energy. I loved the people were wonderful. They had a lot of getting together, a lot of training sessions, but I didn't feel, I started feeling like there wasn't enough value coming from the team because I was bringing in my own leads. I mean, so they would give us like a whole sheet and we would go through all the, you know, call this, call this, call off market. And I just, and I'm not a great person of just sitting down and making calls. I'm, I'm kind of a mover and a shaker. And so if I have to sit down and do something like that, it makes my skin crawl. So it, it didn't work for me. And then I had a bunch of my own leads that I was bringing into it. And I remember, I remember calling John and being like, you know, I feel like what I'm taking from them, like I had a bunch of rentals, I had this and that, but I didn't have anything of substance. And I had some of my own that I was bringing to the table, but I was like, I don't want to give them like a 60, 40 split. I didn't want to give them anything like that because it's just like, it was all mine. And I had already been learning from John how to do A to Z with, you know, implementing everything to Skyslope and getting all the forms done digitally. And whereas on that team, 
yeah, they'll do it for me, but I had already learned how to do it myself because of John. So I just, I didn't see the value of giving them all this money as a result of, you know, again, probably because I started with John for the first month or two. And I learned that you can do this yourself. You know, I think other people who have either come from a bigger company or a company that does do all the work for them, it's all they know. And so I think Mm -hmm. it's such a key. Yeah. So I think it's such like a mentally becomes such a tedious idea of thinking like, oh my God, I've got to do all this, 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 and this. But once you learn it and once you're trained properly with a proper mentor, AKA John, biggest fan, whoop, whoop. Um, But because (laughs) it was, yeah, seriously, big fan. Um, But John, and again, to piggyback on Eric said, he was always accessible. I mean, and you know, on top of being a realtor, his, you know, he's also a flight attendant. So he's traveling, but he always gets right back in touch with you. It's like, you would not know he's halfway across the world in like, Dubai because John gets right back in touch with you. And um, it's wonderful. So he's always on and always accessible. So it made it, it made it a much easier choice. And, you know, I, I like repetition and yes, I ask him questions, you know, over again, but always handled me with beautiful kid gloves. And uh, it's so much easier now to handle. Um, I haven't been because I've just, I love the idea of having the freedom and doing, you know, what you want as a realtor. And I haven't put my all into it as much as like Eric's like he's working seven days a week and don't doing all that. And I haven't really utilized all of that. And I haven't given it my all, which I have discussed with John, I've had so many other things going on in my life, but now I'm, I'm like mentally, I'm like, I'm in the game. I've got, I'm ready to go, but I still had about like 15 deals in the past two and a half. Sorry, my dog just walked in. He's going to probably bark at me. Hi puppy. Um, yeah, sorry. I've been what, away. Go ahead. What would be, um, same as I asked Eric, what would be some of those questions that you feel would be good for students, not necessarily brand new, but just maybe new to EXP in terms of um, what they should ask teams versus, you know, choosing just to go through the mentor program. Um, well, again, I, and I, I feel like, and I don't know if I'm remembering this correctly, but I feel like it was always, it was a taboo topic that you couldn't discuss with other people you know, what's your commission, what's your split, what, am I wrong with that? Was that something that was just usually not like just out on the table and it's not something you were supposed to discuss with other realtors? Typically in most offices, yeah, you, every, every agent is on a different commission split and nobody talks about it because it, they, no, they're not supposed to, yeah. Yeah. So e- EXP has uncovered all that. Right. And so when I was visiting, you know, all the Keller Williams and because the town I live in, in Denville, I have probably the top agents of Mars County, like, and not only that, they all like literally I'm friends with them and they all live in my Lake community. So like the top, top, top people. Yeah. So you see it. So when I have like a sign, say in Indian Lake where I live and it's, you know, compared to, they've got like 30 here and there, you know, it, it's still a lot of love and support. They're like, oh, wait, I saw your sign. That's great. Cause they know I'm a newer agent and they kind of have the monopoly in this area. But when people heard I was getting my license, I had a lot of those companies reaching out to me and being, oh, you know, with your personality, you need to come speak to, you know, so-and-so from this company and that company. So I did my due diligence and I did speak with them. And then my girlfriend, Susan Priori, who is on our downline with John, she actually you know, gave me the whole spiel of how much more beneficial it is and how great John is. And I know you're nervous because you want, you know, you want a lot more handholding because you've never done anything like this before, let alone before that 13 years, I was a stay home mom. So I wasn't mentally in the workforce, you know, but um, I think, you know, and I heard again, the taboo questions, you don't ask about the numbers and stuff like that. But obviously, that's been debunked with the XP, because we're all either if you're on a team, if you're on yourself, it's, it's an open conversation, which to me seems so much more refreshing. And when you're discussing mm-hmm. it with other agents now, like I was just at a con- John and I were just in a conference in Atlantic City, and I was talking to other agents trying to, you know, bring them in. And 
but everyone was very open to discussing what they're getting. And so it's, it seems to be a very open conversation now, but um, definitely, you know, the splitting, the work-life balance, the um, medical, which is huge, you know, having a family. Um, so again, very, very similar things that Eric was saying, but that would be probably the gist of what I would be looking for and asking for and hoping that they would be asking me, you know. Um, so feeling really discuss the numbers, the commission split. Yeah. Yeah. Can I chime in again first? So yeah. the one thing about um, the bigger brokers, though, that still have the brick and mortar offices around is if you do put in office time, typically they do get calls because a lot of people don't know about eXp. Just the average consumer doesn't know hmm. really about it. Um, and they don't really see the office anywhere. So it is a little harder for us, I think, to get listings um, outside of our sphere. But if you work for a big office like Keller Williams or something like that, and you're in an office, they get calls all the time. And if you do the office thing, what they'll do is they'll put you like on a rotation, like a round robin, and they'll give you listings. The one thing that I would want more from eXp is more listings. But we had a Zoom this morning where John went over some interesting ways for free to get listings. And I'm not against paying a third party vendor for listings, but um, Whereas I think that that might be a place where they're kind of trying to entice agents by offering them listings as opposed to just buyer clients. Um, going back to the working seven days a week thing, like, so I don't work like nine to five, seven days a week, but I'm always touching something seven days a week. So if it's Sunday at eight o'clock and I'm on the couch, I have five new leads in my KV core and I do an Instagram post and I research um, the MLS for new listings for one of my buyer clients. You know I mean? That might take me an hour, hour and a half at most. I've worked that day. It's the seventh day in the week. I'll have a day where I work 10 hours. I'll have a day where I work four or five and I want to go to the beach and hang out. You know I mean? I, I, I always get my work done. And I think that that's another thing too, is like, I don't want to be told, like, I have to go to the office at 8am every Wednesday morning to be sitting on the phones. Like, I don't need to do that. I can just, you know, with the XP, I can kind of just do my own thing. Um, but I, I'm very motivated, so I'm not, you know, being lazy about it. Um, I work hard. As far as the KV core thing goes, like you were, Jen, like you were saying, like we're both people, person, people, 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 I guess, great personalities, but it's really hard to, to cold call. It's really hard to get on the phone with a stranger, even if you're like us, like it's, it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. So for me with the KV core, I just keep hammering them out. I, I respond with an email first, then if there's a number. I text or call or both the next day and I might go through 35 leads, but then I get one like the one I have today and she's pre-approved for $800,000. You know, um, I had a KV core lead last year that I got as a buyer client looking in the 600 range. She wound up being the client that sold the multifamily in Jersey and sold their beautiful home in Red Bank. So that was a three for one from KV core. Awesome. So KV core, it does work. You just have to keep hammering them home. Um, I, I do want to spend the next it's like a couple months just tr really trying to get listings. So I've I've currently have only one listing and it's a lease. So I really need to get some some actual you know good listings, and that's what I'm going to be focused on. So I guess my goal is to start hammering listings and maybe not working with so many buyers because in this market, I mean, I have six buyer clients right now, but with a buyer client, there is no guarantee. I know. There's no guarantee I'm going to sell a home to them. There's no guarantee that their awesome offer over asking price is going to get accepted. With a seller in this market, I almost feel like it's a guarantee, mm -hmm. barring any you know crazy unforeseen circumstances. Like John told me, listings last. So the goal for me this year is to get listings, like tons of listings. That's what I want. I got at least I want ten listings this year. You know that'd be a great year. That's, that's a very reasonable goal. I want to touch on something that Eric mentioned about um, leads and, and floor time. When I worked for, I worked for um, Century 21 for several years, I owned a boutique and then I worked for um, Remax. And what you'll find with floor time is the phone rings, but it's usually, they're usually looking for a particular agent and they're looking for that agent who is farming. So you really have to farm a neighborhood to develop calls. So yeah, you can answer phone calls all day. You're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, Joe's, yeah. Oh yeah, Joe Burris, yeah. Oh yeah, Joe Burris. It's like, I remember doing that. It was like, and then, you know, so depending on what the company's policy is regarding leads that come in, 
you know, when I own my brokerage, any lead that came in on something you advertised as a listing agent, the lead went to you, you know, because it's you're spending the money. So some companies, um, I think they might have all changed. And most people today are calling cell phone numbers anyway, um, because they're looking for that agent who's making the impression on them. So yeah, it's really important to get your name out there, your face out there. Um, and, and that's how you're gonna generate more leads. What's cool about EXP and the mentor program is you have your mentor who will train you. Um, if you have an upline, you have your upline resources like Holly does morning coaching calls Monday through Friday at 8.05 a.m. They're a 20 minute call. Um, you get on, you, you, they do some practice scripts um, Holly, tell us a little about a little bit about that co co call daily call. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about it. So thank you for asking me. We we just started this. Um, we've only been doing it for two weeks, but we start at 8:05 because we know realtors are always late. So I tell everyone go ahead and log in at eight o'clock, but I don't kick it off until 8:05. <laughs> so the first couple of minutes you just hear dinging as everybody's logging in. And then at 8.05, we start with a motivational um, quote. We've been reading John Maxwell, and everyone that, the feedback that I've gotten is that it really helps set the mindset for the day. So that's usually just a couple of minutes. And then we pause so that you have an opportunity to reflect on what you've just heard without me sharing my opinion about what I just read. Um, and then we jump right into the script and the role play. So um, what we will be doing is sharing the script in advance so that everyone has an opportunity to read them and understand what we're going over. But right now we're doing um, how to set an appointment with an internet lead. So this might work for your KV Core or if you pay for Zillow or Realtor.com lead. And we're using Right now, what we're practicing is the ALM methodology. So it's appointment, location, motivation. So the very first thing is setting the appointment with these leads. Um, and we'll go through maybe two agents, give them each about three to five minutes to practice just setting that initial appointment with the consumer that has called in. Um, then we give some feedback. We open up for wins for a couple of minutes, just allowing everyone to share anything from they've written an offer, they've got a contract. Um, last week I shared my win was working out six days a week, uh, which is really important to me. So we go, it doesn't have to be real estate related. You share whatever, whatever you feel like is a win in your world. Um, so we open the call. <laughs> Uh, allow everyone to share if they would like to and then and then we just sign off so our goal is to keep it right at about 20 minutes um, and it really has just in the past two weeks I can tell with the agents that have been on their confidence and comfort level to be just called out <laughs> and say okay set an appointment ready <laughs> Um, so we'll transition from those calls to buyer appointments, listing appointments. Um, we have a uh, like a itinerary, I guess, for the for the rest of this year of what we're going to be covering in in small bite pieces. And then I, I also do the same thing as a mentor. Every week I have a different subject and I have like a, a five week course that I kind of go through. And then when I go through it, I start over again. But it's kind of great because as I mentor agents, they can jump on at any time and I know where they're at. And it's not just for new agents. Um, today I had seven people on the call and they range from 20 years experience, 20, 20 years experience down to brand new. So we had seven agents on it and it was good because we are masterminding on top of training. So it's collaboration. So that's one great source that we have. The brokerage itself offers over 50 hours of live training with some of the biggest producers in the country. We have Grant Cardone, who is super famous uh, coach who teaches classes in EXP. 
we have Tarek Al Musa from HGTV, who is also, you know, we all know him. He teaches a class. Um, mm -hmm. You get to see other people's CMAs. I mean, I've never been the fly on a wall, the listing presentation. I learned everything on my own. On my last listing presentation, I took one of the agents who's been in the business for 15 years. She goes, can I go with you? I'm like, sure. So we collaborate. I took her on my listing presentation. You don't get that cooperation on other brokerages because they see you as your competition. So that's what I really um, like about this company. And then on top of the training that I spoke about in the world with all the big names, our local brokerage does training as well. Um, it's more geared towards New Jersey specific items, but and all the training that is done um, in our EXP world is also archived and you can watch it at your leisure. So you don't have to attend it live if you don't want to. You can just be home and be a night owl and say, all right, I'm going to watch Grant Cardone series every night at 11 p.m. for the month till I'm done with it. So, yeah, there's lots of great tools for agents to use. And I think the number one thing that I see in agents who don't who, who give up are the ones who don't take advantage of what's out there. Some people take like uh, one of the agents is like, my husband said I need to go sell more and stop watching all this training. So, you know, it, it can get overwhelming. You just really have to learn how to balance yourself because there is just so much out there. You know, focus on what you want, focus on listings if that's what you want and go find out what uh, training is available for you. Eric has a uh, hand raised. <laughs> <laughs> I love my emojis. Um, great. <laughs> I want to say that, uh, um, sorry, my dog's right here. Um, hang on one second. I'll come back. You, you, you have people and your dogs. I know you <laughs> haven't. Well, the one thing I don't think we, we, we actually are addressing is also, a, and in questions of what we ask, um, you know, when we're interviewing with other agencies, um, profit sharing, which is huge. You know, it's just like, the money it's just there it's like bonus like retirement fund right there and it's just by doing what we would be doing anyway we're making this money and you get this nice little statement coming in you're like oh that looks nice and you're like it's like a savings account that you're not even aware that you're doing your, you know? stock, your stock awards yeah stock awards yeah, yeah. so it, it so that's a really impressive thing that exp does offer so yeah, yeah totally um right. your dog so okay yeah, yeah. He's, he's <laughs> I um I take him with me on a lot of my appointments and I always have his head out the window. So he's my assistant and he sells all the dog houses up and down the shore. <laughs> he's a, he's an icon agent for sure. <laughs> um, so I want to start an, a marketing campaign where I want to find your forever home and ah. try to try to put a wolf over your head if if it works. I don't know. That's cute. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna blanket all the pet supplies plus all the dog grooming stores all the places where dogs like the little like the stay over places for dogs um, pet resorts and try to even if I have to pay the monthly fee I want them to create cards that you people with dogs and um, I finding a niche is really important um, as a so one thing that I wanted to give a little advice to a new agent if they're gonna watch this is for me, EXP seemed overwhelming at first um, because a lot of it is on your time. Like they have all these incredible trainings and the 50 hours a week of live training and the recorded classes that you can use and all the different things that are at your disposal. I kind of felt like I didn't really know how to balance wanting to go out and prospect versus putting enough time into the back end of things, like all those trainings. And I still, to this day, I don't think I've really given it enough attention. And I want to, devote more time every week to doing what John said, like watching the Grant Cardone or, or picking up these classes, because I think that it's because it's because it's in the cloud and it's not in an office right in front of you. you, you it's easy to forget about it, that it's there. Um, but I want to make sure that I that I devote time. I want to do time blocking where I devote some time every week to that now, because I do have over a year under my belt and I don't feel as overwhelmed as I used to. So this is a perfect time for me to get into those trainings. But I think as a new agent coming to EXP, you don't even realize how many resources are actually available. Like I, I don't even know the last time I went into the world and walked around, you know? Um, so I think that it, it can, it can, you can also get lost in that world too. And you can wind up spending four hours walking around like it's a video game, but you know, you can, 
I think you have to, I think, I think without having the structure of an office, you need to do time blocking and set up your week so that, you know, kind of on Wednesday morning at nine o'clock, I'm going to walk, I'm going to do this training on Sunday night at 10 o'clock before bed. I'm going to watch that video or do, you know, do that training. And I think that that would help a new agent a lot because without that, I think they're going to be consumed with, I need to have sales, you know, I need to get paid and I need to, you know, prospect and follow up with my leads. But, you know, you have a long day of writing a contract and going out on showings. You kind of, you come home, you kind of forget about all that amazing, those amazing tools you have at your disposal. Yeah, that's a great point. Sends out their training calendar on Sunday night. And so for the agents that I mentor that are on our team, we tell them, take a look, you know, when that, when it comes out on Sunday night, take a look at it, go ahead and, and to your point, time block, put the ones that are the most important on your calendar and, and don't fill up every day. Um, I, I wouldn't even put more than three probably a week unless you're brand new and you need to get into some of the sky slope basics and um but having it on your calendar and knowing this is the time throughout the week that i'm going to spend on my education this is the time throughout the week that i'm going to spend on my prospecting for new buyers or new sellers um or even to your point i've got this great marketing idea and this is going to be the time that i spend on figuring out how i'm going to Put a woof over your head. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> right. That's really cute. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's everyone has like a niche, I think, or people are trying to get a niche. Um, and and one thing that I, I'm a big Ryan Serhant fan. Don't make fun of me. And uh, I he has this amazing branding strategy and and that you know there's there's a million agents in the country. You know there's there's countless agents in New Jersey. It's like how do you stand out from them? Um, you know, John, John has a guy that he brought on, Michael Kravchuk, that his whole thing is not your average realtor, and he's doing very well for himself. But I also know that, you know, he, he works like eight days a week. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> he does. It's like, yeah. So. And somehow think, he still finds time to prep. <laughs> do what? Do what? Meal prep. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a meal prep guy. Yeah. Um, but, um yeah, go on. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I, I did you guys have anything else you wanted to add? No. So I want to thank Holly for um, putting this together for us. That was awesome. Holly is in Charlotte, North Carolina. She's part of the Kimsey Evans. You are the, the Kimsey Evans team um, down there in Charlotte. And then Jennifer Woods, like we said, is up in the... Um, is the, what area is that, Jennifer? I'm in, the, I'm in the Mars County area, but I also cover Sussex and Essex, and I'll travel. Why not? The beautiful then, state we live in. Right. And then we have Eric Magliacane, who is here near in Asbury Park with me, and he um, specializes in the Jersey Shore, but is willing to cover the state. And then, um, you know, if, if you're looking to join EXP, Feel free to reach out to any one of us on this call. We'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you. And, you know, we all have different levels of experience here. So it's great to chat with any one of us. And I'm sure you'll get your questions answered. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice seeing you thank all. You thank you. Bye. Bye.